Hi everyone, Professor Gassimi here. In this component of the lecture, we're going to be speaking about attention. So, first of all, recall that in the traditional encoder-decoder network, this is what we showed in the last component of the lecture, the context vector, C, this one here, is just equal to the last hidden state from the encoder network. So, basically, we take whatever is generated at HE1, we pass that in with x2 to generate he2, that's passed along and combined with, eight, with x3 so that we can generate this final context vector c, which reflects something about everything in this sequence here. Okay, the problem with this context though is that it's going to be focused on the later part of the sequence more than it will be on the earlier part of the sequence. Imagine if, for example, this function here, this g, was simply taking an average of uh, h e t minus 1 and x e t. Well, as time goes on, if you're taking the average of things repeatedly that are occurring further back in the sequence, and you're passing them in sequentially like that, the value from things very early in the sequence will sort of get very uh, smoothed out compared to the things that happen later in the sequence. And so these, this particular way of representing the context is not ideal because it will inevitably be focused on things that happen at the end more so than it will be at the things that happen at the beginning. Now what we'd really like ideally is if we could pass a holistic fixed size representation of the encoder's context, let's call it C of T, to the decoder on this side uh, and make that context contain what was most relevant to each step in the decoding procedure. Okay, so for example, what I might like is if I wanted to decode this value hd2, the, I, I would be very interested in knowing not just this last hidden state here, but I might be interested in knowing which of these three hidden state values gives me the most useful information to decode the value here. And you can imagine if this is a translation task, for instance, um, let's say the English to Spanish example, this one's going to have a lot of relevance for predicting this one, right? Okay, so what I'd really like is a way to kind of learn which of these has the most relevance so that I can, I can use that when I'm trying to decode this instead of just using the end. Okay, the way that I can do that is I can start off by saying, hey, let's just come up with a a matrix that tells me for any given uh, value of h on the decoder side, so one of these elements here, what's most relevant to it on this side, on the encoder side, right? Because we will always have this hidden state information from the encoder available. We'll always have computed all these before we start a decoding step. So what I'd be interested in then is when I want to do a decode step, which of these are useful for me to be looking at. Okay, so if I, if I had that and I, let's say I normalized it so that um, the values reflected the proportional relevance of each of the encoder's hidden states to each of the decoder's hidden states. So for this guy, I have a normalized vector that says, how important was this one? How important was this one? And how important was this one? And they all sum to one. Well, then what I could do is I could just, according to their, um, their relevance, which is, let's call it, that normalized relevance is alpha, I could sort of take a weighted sum of these three vectors here and use that as the hidden state for this guy, hd4. Or when I'm at hd5, I could take uh, whatever the, the relevance was of these three vectors and combine those in a weighted sum average uh, or form to get um, the hidden state that's relevant for predicting this guy, and similarly with hd6 and so on. Okay, now this idea of not limiting ourselves just to the value here at the end as the context, but, but allowing the context to change as a function of where we are in this decode process, this is called an attention mechanism. Why is it called attention? Because it basically tells us when we're performing the decode operation what to pay attention to in the encoder part of the sequence. Okay, And it's nice because by taking a weighted average of these uh, hidden state vectors, it's always a fixed length. 
we can scale this as a function of, you know, if we have 50 sort of things on the encoder sequence, well, a weighted sum of 50 vectors will still have the same dimensionality, and it's very nice and flexible for the purposes of decode um, procedure. Now, in the context of translation, which is something we've spoken about a little bit in this lecture, the attention mechanism actually tells us which contexts from the encoder sequence to pay attention to at which step in the decoder sequence. So we spoke about English to French translation. So here's an example. Of, let's say we have a sentence. The agreement on the European Economic Area was signed in August 1992, period, end. And we wanted to translate that to its French equivalent, which I've shown here on um, the y-axis of this matrix. Well, this matrix is actually representing something about the attention of, of, the, of a model that's trained to do this translation. So, for example, if we're on this part of the uh, decode sequence, so, you know, we're trying to figure out what's the, what's the word, this is a question mark, let's say. We don't know that this is European yet. And we're trying to figure out what in the input context should we pay attention to. Well, the attention model would tell us you want to be looking at the word European, and this should be very informative for what word you, you put here, okay? And similarly, if we were trying to figure out the value of the word that fell into this location, let's say zone, but assume we didn't know it yet, what the attention model is telling us is you should look at economic area. Economic area are the two things in this long sequence that are the most relevant for if you want to decode the word uh, on, on this location, which is zone in the French side. Okay, now I want to point out a subtlety here, which is sometimes lost on people with attention, which is that attention is a function of the data in addition to um, the parameters of that matrix A that we had discussed um, that comes up with the relationship between what's important on the decoder side and how that is related to the encoder side. Okay, so this is important because if you change a single word in the encoder sequence, what the, the decoder sequence will pay attention to may change. Okay, so I think the best way to understand that is with an example. Let's say we have the encoder sequence. Why did the tired chicken not cross the road? And we have a really great encoder-decoder model. And so let's say the decoder sequence generated the answer because it was too tired. Okay, if we went and we probed the value or the attention of the word um, it, the, or the second location in the decoder sequence, what we should see is that the attention pointed us more to the word chicken than it did to the word road. I mean, it might point us to both of these, the attention might be focused on both chicken and road, but it here is referring to the chicken and not the road, so if the attention mechanism works correctly, it should point to the chicken. But if we change the encoder sequence to say, why did the chicken not cross the wide road? Well, now it, in because it was too wide, is referring to the road and not the chicken. And so you'd expect the attention in the model to reflect that. Okay, this has very important implications. Why? Because attention provides a way that you can take neural network models particularly in the natural language context, and you can start to do some kinds of uh, interpretation with them. You could take, for example, in a question-answer sense, you could take uh, decoder sequences here, and by studying the attention, you could try to reverse engineer something about what is it in the question that's relevant for determining a given answer. And that's really cool because it provides some ability to do interpretation of of these models that are otherwise very challenging to interpret.